I'm Peter Pretorius and 29 years ago I was in this very spot in a very different situation. This is the village of Pombara which is in Inyamban province of Mozambique. In 1984 this was a distribution center. People came in from the whole area around. In fact, some of them walking for well over 150 kilometers to get here in various stages of starvation. This is also the village to which I was brought by government to see the problems that were going on. I was supposed to come here for one day. And when the aircraft left in the morning, he said he had to go and refuel somewhere and he'd be back at five o'clock and I needed to be at the airport at exactly five o'clock. I was pleased to go back at five. I had a, such a traumatic day. Even in that first half day I was here, more than 18 people starved to death. I never seen anybody starve to death. I never seen people in this kind of condition. I mean, it struck me to the very depth of my heart what these people were struggling with and yet I I was pleased to be thinking I'm leaving and I got to the airport and there was no airplane arrived eventually it was dark and there were no lights so we knew they're not coming I tried to sleep in the hotel in town that night but it was so awful I decided to come back to this village I spent 10 days here sleeping under a bush just like everybody else some nights terrified because Renama was in the area and we could hear the rapid, uh, you know, automatic rifle fire that sounded so close and yet it was probably some distance away. I spent time with the people, hearing their hearts, hearing what they'd been through. And then in the middle of that week, an old man came stumbling across this clearing here. And this used to be a very big tree that was standing in the clearing. It was a cyclone that blew it over. And I took the old man and brought him to the base of this very tree. And I sat him down, told him I'll go and get him some water. When I came back, he, was, he looked like he was sleeping. I shook him to wake him up. And his head fell to one side. He wasn't sleeping. He died while I was gone. I know something inside me snapped. I mean, I just couldn't handle the emotion that was going on in me. I, it was like the only, the only recourse I had was anger and I shouted at God, standing in front of that dead man. I shouted at the top of my voice and I shouted, God, I don't know how you feel. I only know how I feel and my heart is broken. I don't know if this is your will. Is it your will that people die like this? And I so distinctly heard in my heart the instruction I sent you here to help these people. I want you to help them. When I got home, my wife was so happy to see me. She thought I was dead or something. I was supposed to have been gone five days. I was gone in two weeks. And she said to me, what's wrong with you? Something's changed. I said, there's nothing wrong with me, darling, but something very big has changed. My whole heart's changed. My life's changed. You know, I said, I've either got to try and forget what I've been exposed to in the last 10 days, or else you and I need to commit our lives to trying to help these people, and especially these children. I want to go back and make a home for those 320 orphans. I want to go back and bring food to these people. I want to make a difference. And that's where Jam was born. That's where Jam started with nothing. And today, end of last year, we reached over a million recipients. Amazing what can happen if you dedicate your life and God helps you.